Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. It's Monday. Can you believe it? I'm just going to go live on Facebook, so just bear with me while we get this going to so that our friends on Facebook can join us because today is a very special day as we get ready for Easter. Okay. Let's go live. Hello, Facebook. Okay. So we're on Facebook. Hello, Facebook friends. Hello, YouTube friends. Nobody's quite joined just yet, but that's okay because you can catch this on the replay. I wonder if I can put that closer together so I'm not like totally talking to two different screens, even though I really am. Okay. Hello. Happy Monday. Today is Monday. What is the date? Hi. Uh, what is the date today? April 6th? April 6th. Okay. Today, I'm going to show you how to make homemade chocolate Easter eggs. And we're not going to get too professional about this. For those of you who don't know, I did go to pastry school. I am a pastry chef. I used to work. Hi, Cheryl. Nice to see you. Um, I used to work for Duff Goldman, the guy from Ace of Cakes on the Food Network. I was his head baker for about a year and a half. Um, but I ultimately pursued a career that was more healthy than being a pastry chef, even though being a pastry chef is, was so much fun. Um, so, but because I have a pastry chef background and now I'm healthier, um, I like to make uh, desserts that are healthier. And now that I have my own children, it's really important for me to make non-refined sugar, um, refined sugar free uh, desserts. So uh, these are the uh, chocolate Easter eggs that I like to make around Christmas time. Christmas? <laughs> Easter. They all live in the same place, I think, anyway. So the Easter Bunny, Santa, the Tooth Fairy, right? I think. Anyway, so um, I like to help the Easter Bunny out and be his little helper. And um, so we're gonna make some eggs. I'm gonna stop saying, um, okay. Hey Jafar, nice to see you. So the first thing I want to tell you is that you're gonna need to get some kind of Easter egg molds, okay? And any size will do. I have these, which if I put my hand up like this, you can see they're about the size of my palm. So quite large, but you can get small ones too. And then I actually also have these um, mini, um, mini peanut butter cup, for lack of a better word, molds. And they're both made of silicone. You can get anything, just go on Amazon, check out what they've got. They've also got, you can make like a giant plastic mold. And um, I believe my friend Maria was asking about plastic and yes, you can indeed use um, plastic molds as well. So this is the first step that you're going to need to get. The next step you need is chocolate. So you can use baking chocolate or chocolate chips, or you can just get your favorite chocolate from the store. Or if you can't find your favorite chocolate from the store right now, um, go for whatever you can find. I prefer um, 70% or above, and I actually use 88% at our house. I think this is 88, this is 85. Um, there's an 88% one from Choco Love that's amazing. This one is Valrona. This one you can get from Trader Joe's. Um, you can use the lint ones, whatever. You can use any kind of chocolate you want, any percentage, but the healthier uh, versions are above 70%, okay? So I'm just gonna use, you can use however much chocolate you want. It depends how many molds you have and how many eggs you wanna make, okay? So I've got that. And then the next thing you're gonna to wanna to get together is some filling. So think about what you want to do with your chocolates. Do you wanna fill them with peanut butter, almond butter, cashew butter? Um, do you wanna make some homemade caramel? We're not gonna do that today, but you totally can and you can do it in a healthy way. Maybe I'll show you how to do that in a future video. Um, do you want to do, I remember as a kid um, having the chocolate Easter eggs that had Rice Krispies in them. So I'm going to do that today too. Um, and then think about also, do you want to make hollow eggs that you can take can candies like Canberry, you know, those like colorful Cadbury eggs. They're not refined sugar free, but you could make a hollow egg and put that inside or put chocolate chips inside or something so that when you um, finish making it, it, it jiggles. So there's all sorts of different things. So think about what you'd like to use to fill 
your eggs with. Um, and the next thing you're gonna need is a double boiler. So you don't need anything fancy. Um, I've got one and I already started making chocolates for you already this morning. So I just took a pot and you put about an inch of water in the pot and bring it to a boil. And then you take a glass or a metal bowl and put it on top. Very important when you're using a double boiler, you do not keep the heat on when you put the bowl on, okay? Because the flames will come up the sides and burn the bowl and burn the chocolate. So some of you might be wondering, why wouldn't you just melt the chocolate directly in the pan? Well, because you probably burn the chocolate and also you need to be very careful of the temperature of the chocolate. So for those of you who don't know, you really should be tempering the chocolate when you're using it. Temper means Tempering the chocolate means bringing it to a very specific temperature. I want this to be super easy for you. So we're going to kind of cheat the tempering today. If I were working in a bakery or a chocolate, uh, like if I were an actual chocolatier, I would definitely be tempering the chocolate. Any chocolate that you buy at the store has been tempered. And the reason you temper the chocolate, which again means to bring it to the proper temperature, and by the way, each um, milk chocolate, dark chocolate, and white chocolate, they all have different temperatures that they need to be tempered to. Um, but the reason you would do that is so that you get a crispy bite when you bite into the chocolate instead of it just falling flat. Tempering the chocolate also helps f um, so that it doesn't bloom, and bloom means, if you ever opened a chocolate bar and it's got a white film on top of it, that's because it bloomed, and it it's either too old or it wasn't tempered properly. Um, another reason you would um, temper the chocolate is to make it nice and shiny and glossy. Um, and also so that it doesn't just like melt in your hand as soon as you have the chocolate, which is not very good if you're making these Easter eggs to help out the Easter bunny. Um, you don't want them to melt very easily, depending on what the temperature is outside. So that's why you would temper it. I'm gonna show you an easy way how to temper it today. It's not gonna be perfect because I want this to be easy, uh, especially if you're a busy mom like me, you don't have time. However, if you do wanna temper properly, there are tons of uh, videos on YouTube that will show you. You'll need a candy thermometer. It's not that hard. It's just an extra step that I'm not gonna do today. Okay, so I'm gonna get things started by, um, can you all see me? Yes. And yes. So maybe, if Friends, I'm gonna turn it a little bit like this. Okay, now you can see the pot, everybody can see the pot. So I'm just gonna bring this to a boil and it's not gonna take very long. So in the meantime, I'm gonna chop up my chocolate, okay? So, um, um, what do I want to say? The more you, you chop it, the smaller the pieces are, the easier it will be to melt. So it's just like if you're putting pieces of something in a blender. So the smaller the pieces are, the easier it will be to blend. So I kind of just break it up a little bit in the foil, and then I'm gonna put it onto my cutting board. Now, make sure that when you are putting this on your cutting board, you don't put it on a cutting board that you use to cut onions or garlic or anything with a pungent taste, because otherwise, your chocolate is gonna taste like that. Nobody wants chocolate that tastes like onion or garlic. I mean, I don't think, I wouldn't. Not my jam. Love onions and garlic, but not in my chocolate. Not in my chocolate. We've added bacon to chocolate, but I don't think we've added onions and garlic to chocolate yet. Or maybe I'm wrong. I mean. Hey, Alice, nice to see you. Good. V Vienna, right? Vienna's there? Yeah. Good to see you. Okay, we're just breaking up some chocolate. Um, to melt for our chocolate eggs. Okay, see, I broke it up in the foil and now I'm just gonna put it on the chopping board. So I just, yeah, you can see right there, cool, huh? So two, two user-friendly tips you can do. Okay, sweetie, grab a chair. Uh, yes, my day is going great, Jafar, thank you for asking. So two tips though with the cutting boards. Um, yes, Vienna is here and all excited about the chocolate eggs. Okay, yay, hi Vienna, nice to see you. Now, so you wanna say hi to Vienna? Hi. Hi. Okay, so either have cho uh, chopping boards in your kitchen that are specifically denoted for specific things and write on them, I put, actually you can't see this, but I wrote on this, no 
onions, no garlic, fruit only on this side, and then this side is for vegetables. Um, I don't love plastic cutting boards. I still have some circling around from previous lives, um, but I prefer wood. Um, so anyway, so you can get different chopping boards and write in Sharpie on them, specifically what you can chop on them, chocolate, fruit, vegetables, or you can just do like I did, and on one side it's vegetables, on the other side it's fruit and chocolates and stuff like that. That's not going to leave a mark, a mark, um, a flavor. So please be careful with your hands. Let me just put this down like this. Vienna says, hi, Madison. Hi. Guys, on Facebook, I'm sorry. Woo. I don't know if you can see me chopping. No, you can't see it. So basically just what I want you to do is be really careful with your hands so when you're chopping, put your hand on the top of the knife like this, but fingers up like that, so that you're not gonna chop your hands off, okay? We don't wanna do that. Okay, no, but. <laughs> your fingers, we don't wanna do that. So chop this up into, you know, little-ish pieces. And as you can see, I just turned off, can you see I just turned off the stove because my water came to a boil. Now I've already got my glass bowl on there. Um, it's Mommy, actually I empty. Wake I won't wake them up, sweetie. Um, because Whoa. I was making chocolate this morning, so there's actually no chocolate cool. in the bowl. There's just like a little Mommy, residual cool. chocolate from what I was making this, this morning. Is cool. Isn't it oh. cool? Mommy, this is stuck together. Oh my gosh, it's stuck together. You're kidding. What are we going to do about that? I don't know. We're going to cut um, it. We're going to cut it. So that's okay that it was on there. Oh, yeah. But you're going to start with the clean glass. Are so cute. They're so cute, these tiny little pieces. Oh, and he has a big piece. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I have two three and a half ounce chocolate this one. bars. This one. Yes, sweetheart, I will. Thank you so much. Oh, here we go. Um, two three and a half ounce uh, chocolate bars that I've cut up. Um. You can do as much as you want, again, depending on how much chocolate you're gonna make. This might not even be enough, but this is what we're gonna start with, okay? So now, yeah, look at that. Okay, chocolate. we've got our chocolate. Now here's the deal. Chocolatey. We are not gonna put, it is chocolatey, huh? We're not gonna put all the chocolate in. This is how we're gonna temper. This is how we're gonna do our tempering. We are going to put in, I'd say 80, 85% of the chocolate to Mommy, melt. Mommy, I'm going to move my chair. You're going to move your chair? Yeah, I'm going to watch it melt. Okay. See, the stove is off so that I'm not burning anything. Cheryl says, hey, Madison, you're such a big helper. She is. Okay. Now, you're going to get chocolate all over you, so I should technically be wearing an apron. For those of you who are worried... There's no flame on the stove right now. This is perfectly safe. I will not have Madison near the stove when I put the flame back on. Okay, take a silicone spatula. And the best way to get the chocolate to melt is to help it along and stir it every so often. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to melt this chocolate down. This could take a few minutes, so bear with me. Um, we're going to melt it down, and then we're going to take the little bit of chocolate that's not melted, and we're gonna temper the chocolate by putting that in. So basically, it's two different temperatures. The room temperature chocolate is gonna um, bring down the, the heat of this chocolate and give us a nice texture to work with. Thus, the, I see it. <laughs> thus the easy way of tempering chocolate, okay? so. While that's doing its thing, we're going to kind of work backwards just for the, the sake of um, minding your time. And I'm going to show you what I've already done. Okay? So first, do you want to come back over here, sweetie, or you want to stay right there? Okay, back over there. So I brought this out. Let me just get Madison situated. Are you okay, Bubba? Yeah. Okay. Do you want the chair again? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, how are we doing, everybody? So, I already did some work for you this morning. I did two things. One of the things I did, and it's kind of hard to see. So, first, I did a full chocolate egg with 
Rice Krispies. So I just literally took melted chocolate, I poured it into my mold. Yeah, yeah I poured it into my mold and I put some Rice Krispies and I stirred it around because I want a solid chocolate egg. And now what I'm gonna do is take it out of the mold. This is why silicone is so wonderful. Ooh. Yeah. And now I have a chocolate Easter egg. Okay? So yeah, what you want to do... We can put it right there. We can put it right there, but what you want to do... Flip it, flip it and then on how you're going to use the egg you're going to wrap it in foil if you want. And so you can get these different size foil wrappers. I got these on Amazon last year. And we're gonna wrap our Easter egg in I'm gonna help you. foil. I'm gonna help you wrap okay. it. Okay, wait sweetie. I'm gonna, so we're gonna put the foil down. And now can you help me and just wrap it? That's great. See, this is a nice task you can do with your kit. And now we've got an Easter egg. Okay, so that's one. So you could you can do anything for, to make a solid chocolate egg. You could just make it completely solid. You could add some stevia drops that are caramel flavored or toffee flavored or something and make it um, that kind of flavor. You can add almond butter or peanut butter. Um, you can do, add anything, add M&Ms, whatever you want. And just, it's, this is a solid chocolate egg. I'm going to keep these in the fridge though, um, because I want them to keep nice and cold. So that's one idea. I'm just going to stir our chocolate Well, I'm here. Okay. So start thinking up of all the, all the different things that you'd want to do to make a chocolate, solid chocolate Easter egg, um, what you'd want to put in there. Okay, I just also want to make a note though, if you're going to add any kind of sweetener, you, I prefer that you don't add any sweetener, you do whatever you want. I don't add any sweetener. However, if you're going to add sweetener, you need to do it at the beginning when you're melting the chocolate because if you try to add something to the chocolate after, especially, yes, you can use sunflower butter too far for sure. Um, if you try to add anything, especially if it's cold to the chocolate once it's melted, it will seize up. And if anybody's ever worked with seized up chocolate before, it's done, it's ruined. You can eat it from the bowl, but you can't work with it. So what we're trying to do is get chocolate that we can actually work with. So if you're thinking, oh, I wanna add some cream or some coconut milk or something, do it as you're melting the chocolate so that they all it all comes to the, temp the same temperature at the same time. Do not add it after, especially if it's cold. So I have maple syrup that I keep in the fridge. If you add that cold maple syrup, after the chocolate is melted, it will seize up and that will be no bueno. Okay, just a user tip. All right, so the other thing that I did is I thought it would be fun to make some hollowed out Easter eggs. So there are two ways this, that, yeah. This one is cool yeah. than this one. So it's kind of hard to see, but what I did is I, there's two ways that you can do this. You can take a brush, you can take either a pastry brush or a silicone brush like this, and you can paint the inside of the egg. Put it in the fridge, let it set. Do another coat, put it in the fridge, let it set. Do another coat, put it in the fridge, let it set, okay? You want it to be thick enough so that it has some integrity in order to be able to hold whatever you're gonna fill it with if you're gonna fill it with anything. So could you please cover your mouth, okay? Thank you, with your elbow, right? The other thing you could do is just literally scoop out chocolate, fill the molds, and then dump this out back into the melted chocolate and it'll leave a layer of chocolate on here and do that three times. So there's three ways that you can do that. I'm gonna show you how to do all of them. I just want you to see how it, how the finished product ends up being so that we can okay, maximize your time. So check this out, okay? I'm gonna take, this is a hollowed out cup. You see this? Hmm. See, Madison, I'm gonna put these. So check it out, woo! Okay, and it's like, Kind of hard to see, but it's like a hollowed out cup. You see that? Okay, we're gonna put this down on our board. Okay, and I'm gonna take the rest of them out. Like this. This is what I was doing this morning, sweetie, when you were playing with your blocks. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So as you notice, I made an even number because we want the, we're going to essentially glue these together. 
Okay. Put this in here. Look at this. That's it. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Now. Look at them. Yeah, I see that. So we're going to take these molds. We don't want to break them. So I've got two halves that make a whole. You complete me. They're not perfect, but it's okay. We're not going for perfect here. We're busy parents, and we're just trying to make something healthy for our I kids. And perfect. You did. Okay. Perfect is not what we're going for. Okay. So Perfect is what we're going for. The way that we're going to glue these together is we're going to take melted chocolate, and we're going to brush the sides, and then we're going to hold them together, and they will stick together. You can leave them like this, or you could consider putting something inside. So maybe M&Ms or, um, I don't know, your favorite. There's my husband. <laughs> well, you can see him in Facebook, but not on YouTube, sort of. That's Ted. Um, uh, yeah, so those Cadbury, you know, the colorful eggs are not really that great for you, but you could put those inside, and then when you close it up, you shake it, and you can hear something, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to close up this hollow egg. So this is another option for you. I can use some of my... Can you to me? Yeah. Okay. I'll come closer to this. Now they can see me on YouTube. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to brush the chocolate, the sides, the edges, the sides, whatever these are, on both of them. Okay. And make sure you've got a generous amount of chocolate because you can shave off. If you want it to be perfect, you can shave it after. Okay. There we go. So I'm not gonna fill these with anything. I'm just gonna make them hollow for now. And then just hold that together. And now we've made a, a hollowed out chocolate egg. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun, you guys. This is fun, I'm having a great time. I hope you are too. And then I'm just gonna um, maybe put this on a plate and let it set in the fridge. <coughs> Literally getting chocolate everywhere. Don't okay. get don't get chocolate everywhere. There's no room in here, but I'm going to make room. I get to eat it all, which is so great. <laughs> Not all, but I do get to taste it. Okay. So that's your chocolate Easter egg number two. Okay, we did one, that's a solid one that you can make just regular chocolate eggs with. And number three, Rice Krispies in it, M&M's in it, whatever. Wrap it up. And now I'm going to show you, you can do little Easter eggs, but I didn't get the little Easter egg molds. I used to be a huge fan of, um, let me show this. Yes, sweetie. I used to be a huge fan of Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. And in fact, this is a true story, and I don't know that I'm proud of it or... I don't know what I am of it, but I was at my friend's house when I was about, I don't know, 13, and they it used to be called Price Club, Ted. Costco used to be called Price Club. I'm from Canada, so maybe it was only in Canada, but it used to be called Price Club, and her parents, my, friend, par my friend's parents, her name was Gloria, got the new Reese's Peanut Butter Cups with cookies on the bottom, and I had, in one night, 12 packs. Of two. Mm. I had 24 Reese's peanut butter cups full size in a single night because I was so excited and I had such a sweet tooth. I had the worst stomach ache and I actually thought that I was gonna have to have my stomach pumped because my stomach was protruding like I was pregnant. So that's how much I love uh, Reese's peanut butter cups. In my adult life, peanut butter has started to cause some tummy trouble in different ways. Um, so I don't eat that anymore I eat almond butter if you are lucky enough to still be able to have peanut butter go for it to make these cups but I'm doing this with almond butter so uh, I did I left this in three steps to show you guys it's really hard to see what if I do this Can you see better no that makes it worse okay that makes it worse so I've got these molds peanut butter cup almond butter cup molds they're mini ones because for Easter I think it's better to do mini ones, but you can do regular size as well. So what I did first is I coated the entire 
thing. I literally took the chocolate, and I'm going to show you how to do this in a minute. I took the chocolate, I put it in all the molds, and then I turned the mold upside down and put the chocolate back into the double boiler so that I would make sure that there was chocolate filling up the entire cup, okay? Then I put it in the freezer to set. You see that? There we go. Okay? Then I put it in the freezer to set. Then I took some almond butter and I filled the almond butter. You don't want runny almond butter or peanut butter. You want it to be more of a pasty. If it's if you don't, um, if your almond butter or whatever, your nut butter or seed butter is runny, just know that it's gonna be messy, okay? But you want it to stay together so it can hold together. So then you fill, see this? So then you fill, that one's running a little bit, but that's because it hasn't been setting for long enough. You fill the, the cup with your almond butter and then you put chocolate on top to seal it up. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to take this out. See? There's my almond butter cup. Do you see that? Woo! Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to take out my almond butter cups and I'm going to show you how to finish these off. You can just serve them like this. Let me just wash the chocolate off my hands. I promise as soon as the chocolate's melted, I'm going to show you the steps to get to where we are now, okay? We're almost there. Oh, it looks so good. Has everybody already done melting chocolate before on the stove? If you haven't, you're going to have it. Okay. Almost done. Almost done. There's a lot of chocolate in here, so I think what I'm going to do is actually give my chocolate a second. Put this, make this water a little hotter. Again, so I'm just going to boil it again so that I can finish off my chocolate. You get to lift your fingers a lot when you're making chocolate, but if you lift your fingers, especially if you're making this for somebody else, remember to wash your hands. Because that's gross. You don't want to give people Easter chocolates with your saliva. Okay, so to wrap these little chocolates, can you see that on Facebook? Wrap these little chocolates, I have little foils. So I've got this one's blue and this one's purple. Okay, you take the foil. Oh, excuse me, that one looks red. What's going on here? It's, see, okay. So take your chocolate, decide where you want the closing to be. I want it to be on the bottom. And here we go. We have our own little almond butter cups. All right. So um, I'm going to put these back in the freezer. Or maybe what I'll do is I'll show you how to fill this. I'm going to put this in the fridge. Okay. We've basically made everything. This is oil again. So we're just about ready to show you how to get to where I just was. Okay. Get my molds. How are we all doing? Does anybody have any questions? Is everybody going to go make this? Okay. Oh, yeah. Here we go. We're just about ready with this. So while I'm um, stirring this, just some um, housekeeping notes. I'm going to move this and to one o'clock Pacific Coast time. And the reason is because my husband, who you just saw, um, usually isn't home at this time. And it just gets a little hairy if I've got both kids um, and I'm on live. Um, I just wanna be respectful of your time and be able to focus on you guys. So I'm gonna move to one o'clock for the remainder of these, Wednesday and Friday. Um, so be sure to check that out at one o'clock. Okay. Now, we've got our chocolate. It's nice and ready. Now we're going to temper our chocolate, remember? So let me move this. And I'm not, I don't want to put the bowl anywhere near my chocolate because water will make the chocolate seize up, okay? So let's put in our room temperature chocolate into this chocolate to temper it, to bring it to a proper temperature. There we go. Don't waste any of chocolate. Don't waste it. Okay. And now stir. Okay. And then it's going to melt down. And then I'm going to show you 
how to do what I already showed you the finished product of. Okay. Here we go. You can talk to your chocolate as it's melting. It's always a good thing to do. Hello, chocolate. You're doing so well. Yes. You're so pretty. You can hear Madison in the background. Making a park out of blocks. Thumbtack and string. This is getting super creative, everybody. Super creative. Okay, while I'm stirring this, another housekeeping thing I'd like to just tell you. Well, a few things. One is I saw a post on Facebook about how this woman baked for these ER doctors and how excited the, the whole staff, the nursing staff, the doctors and everybody was. And I thought, I'm a baker and I've got a powerful group of mamas in this neighborhood. So we're going to start baking for different hospitals and dropping it off every week. So if you live near me and you want to be included in that, great. Otherwise, maybe consider starting it yourself in your own community because that would make them so happy and they're working so hard and anything that we can do to make their lives easier would be fantastic. So just something to consider. Okay, we are ready here with our chocolate. Okay, so I need to make sure there's absolutely no water on my hands at all. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you the brush technique to do your eggs, okay? We'll do two, we'll do four hollowed out eggs and we'll do two um, solid eggs, okay? So take your brush, and literally paint, you see that? Don't worry about being clean, you can um, flake it off later with a knife, okay? This is not about being perfect. Please don't try. Okay. Let's not do that. That's silly. Okay. So I'm brushing. See that? Brushing the inside. If you don't have a silicone brush, you can use a pastry brush. It's totally fine. Okay. And then another method is to... The other method I told you is that you can fill it. Do this. You can fill the egg and then dump out the um, the excess chocolate. So fill the egg, push it up with the, along the side with a spoon like this. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. You want to make sure that the chocolate coats the entire mold because otherwise you're going to have a hole in your chocolate. Okay. Now, I'm just going to dump this out. Oh, see? Okay. So from here, oh, I see some holes. Fill up those holes. See? Nobody's perfect. Not going to be perfect. Okay. Now, I'm not going to show you the next steps because I've already showed you the final product. But what I'm going to do with the hollow stuff is I'm going to put it in the fridge for 10 minutes, let it set, and do two more coats so that I get a nice hard shell like this, okay? But I am gonna show you over here how to make a filled egg, or a solid egg. Oh, sorry, that's in your way. So literally just take your chocolate and fill. Is it raining? I don't know, okay? It doesn't have to go all the way to the top. These are huge Easter molds, so I don't really want them to go all the way to the top because I don't want anybody having that much chocolate in one sitting. Anybody, I mean anybody who's oh, yeah. four. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to bring it all the way to the top, but you can. At this point, if you wanted to, you could fill it with almond butter, put it in the fridge to set, and then cover it up with chocolate to seal it up. But I'm going to do some Rice Krispies. Well, in this case, it's the one degree um, brown rice crisp. Um, and I'm just going to take a few, like maybe about a teaspoon. And I'm just gonna literally pour this into the egg and I'm gonna mix it up. You know, you can't see what I'm doing. Oops, that's a little too much. Eh, maybe not. Okay, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. Okay, see? Ah! Don't, don't do that. And then just mix it up. Mix, 
mix, mix, mix, mix, mix. And now you've got a homemade filled um, Rice crispy egg. This used to be my favorite when I was little. Okay, let's get these Rice Krispies out that I dropped into our chocolate. We do not need you in there. Snap, crackle, pop. Okay? So, we got our filled Rice crispy eggs, and then we've got our shells that we're going to um, put in the fridge and, and do two more layers with, okay? But I already showed you the final product, so I'm just going to put these in the fridge. Just check. Actually, let me use this cutting board because these silicone um, baking cups are kind of wobbly. So I'm going to make it stationary by putting it on this cutting board. Okay. Final thing I'm going to show you is the almond butter cups and then we're done. Okay. So take your, your mold and you can do one of two things. You can brush it. What is the TikTok that you like? Bounce. Uh, the, drip. the drip. Bounce. Shake. Can you Twirl. can you show us? Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. I can't. Come on, you can do it. They're not gonna be able to see it. So I'm gonna brush the inside while Ted shows you. I don't know who the artist is, the singer, but Twitch and his wife Allison something do uh, this incredible dance. And the beat or the song is bounce, shake, twirl, dip. This is how we do the drip. Bounce, shake, twirl, dip. This is how we do the drip. Bounce, shake, twirl, dip. This is how we do the drip. And that's how it goes. Right, Madison? Find it on TikTok, everybody. Okay, so see how messy I'm being? I just want to fill these shells so that we have um, we have a boat essentially that's going to hold the almond butter. That's all. That's all I want to do. Okay, that way. Mm -hmm. And that's all I did for these other ones that I'm going to show you how to fill in a second. Okay, but just like the other ones, make sure that there is no mold showing where your cup mold is. Does that make sense? Like if there's any place that you didn't reach, you need to cover it because your chocolate is your glue. It's it's your glue and it's what holds the almond butter or whatever you're gonna put in here in. Okay, we're almost done. So that's really all it is. Working with chocolate is just a matter of painting and tempering and you know, you can play around with different molds and you can make your own chocolate all year long. You can make your own chocolate bars. You can, you know, you can really have fun with this and make something exciting for your children that is refined sugar-free that you can feel good about feeding them. And that's kind of a win-win. It's not kind of, it is a win-win. Okay, everything's covered. I'm just going to kind of knock out any excess chocolate, but I don't think I have any excess chocolate, okay? Now I'm gonna put this. Mm. I do have some excess chocolate on the top. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this knife and I'm just gonna scrape the excess chocolate off because I don't wanna waste any chocolate. Okay, now I'm gonna put this in the fridge to set, okay? That's gonna set. Now, let me wash my hands one more time and we're almost done. Can I open the drawer? Yes. Yeah. Wow, I have chocolate everywhere. And I was making chocolate this morning with my son. I realized I got it all over his pants. Oh well. Okay, so once I take those out, this is what we're going to have. So we're going to. This, this is my favorite almond butter. It's from Costco. We braved Costco yesterday, and by we, I mean my husband, with a mask, of course. And we got three more, um, three more things of it because um, we go through almond butter. Can you see this? Yeah, you can see this in Facebook. I'll show you in just a minute. So what I'm doing is I'm filling my almond butter cups 
right here. You can fill this with anything. You could even actually, I have, maybe I'll, I'll link to it later, but I have a recipe to make your own peppermint patties, which are amazing. Um, so you could even fill these with, um, actually I did that last year. Maybe I'll do some of that, it's yummy. So you could even um, fill this with peppermint patty mixture and have mint cups instead of almond butter cups. What you don't wanna do is fill it, the almond butter or any kind of filling too high because you want to be able to close the cup with the chocolate, seal it with the chocolate. Okay, we're almost done. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is messy and I'm okay with that. I'm not trying to sell these to general public. This is for me and my husband and my daughter and we're good. Oh, that one needs a little bit more. So, now, what you want to do see everybody so now I'm gonna smack this down I'm just going um, smacking it against the counter okay here we go you do not have to freeze these again or let them set before you put the chocolate on at this point all you need to do okay at this point all we want to do is spoon out some chocolate and put it on top of the almond butter and bring, use the spoon to bring the chocolate all the way up to the sides to seal, to seal it. This one I put a little bit too much almond butter, but I'm okay with that because I'll just eat that one. No problem, okay? I'll show you in just a second on Facebook if you can't see. It's gonna be hard though because I can't tilt, I can't tilt it, but can you see that? Here's a Mm -hmm. Where is it? Yeah, okay. So you see how I filled the top of it? Guys, I don't think I can get this shot for you. Maybe I can. You kind of see that? Okay, and now I'm just gonna set them and that's it. And then I'm gonna wrap them in foil and I'm gonna keep them in the fridge because I don't want them to melt. They shouldn't melt too much, but I just like to be better safe than sorry, especially since you put in all this work and used all this chocolate. So that is how you make your own homemade chocolate Easter eggs. There's so many other ways you can do this. Um, if you have any suggestions or comments, um, please leave me a comment. Um, that is it. I don't know what you guys are planning on doing for Easter. I think I'm gonna do a Zoom call with my family back in Montreal and Ted's family in New York. There's my little, this is Liam. Hi, buddy. Hi. Was he awake? He was. He woke up as soon as uh, <clears throat> I opened the door. Oh, good. Um, so that could be fun. I actually thought about putting out glasses of champagne on the sidewalk, like six feet apart for people on Easter morning. I don't know. Just do something fun for Easter. And then one final thing I just want to say is a reminder to support your local businesses. If you are a local business, any, you're obviously local wherever you are. So if you are a small business owner and you're being impacted by um, being closed and you would like me to give you a shout out, please leave me a comment, send me an email, lauren.lovely at gmail.com. I'd love to give you a shout out. Um, we gotta help each other out. So tell me what your business is, tell me how I can help you, how I can tell people that they can help you too and support you. I'm gonna give a shout out to my friend Tala in Montreal who has a business called the Naughty Llama and she makes the most amazing um, hats, scarves, she knits, she's amazing. She underprices, hear me, Tala, underprices. Um, she should be charging way more and that's amazing. So you can check out the Naughty Llama, and uh, K-N-O-T-T-Y-L-A-L-L-A-M-A. How do you spell llama? Gosh, sorry. Um, I also want to shout out to my friends Cassandra and Andrew at Little West in Los Angeles. Tella's in Montreal, the Naughty Llama, but she ships everywhere. Little West Juices are here in LA. They have the most incredible juices. Cassandra is the reason I got into cooking and baking in the first place. She is phenomenal. Um, they are a small business and they, I think they're doing 15% off their immunity boosts. Um, order their juices, they will ship them to you. Uh, who else? Jam Netta in Malibu. She does this amazing um, dance workout. She's got, uh, I think she's doing free classes actually, 9.30 every day in the morning. Um, I also want to shout out one more, two more, 
one more. Our studio, Five Point Yoga, my husband who you saw, he does free yoga, uh, 9 a.m. every day on his uh, Facebook channel, Teddy McDonald, and on our studio channel, Five Point Yoga, and on his Instagram. Go ahead and, and join. Um, and then I just a shout out to my um, cleaner. She's an organic cleaner. And she's been making masks for the community for free. She won't take anybody's money. And they're the cutest masks. She made one for Madison and Liam, my, my kids and myself. And they've got rainbows and unicorns and cars. And it's, she, it's just amazing. So she's doing really great things in the community. So seek out the people who are doing amazing things in the community. Tell me how I can support you. Support other people however you can. Stay safe. Stay well. Happy Easter. I'll see you on Wednesday. I think we're going to do some enchiladas or risotto. I haven't decided. It depends on what we have in the fridge and what we can get. Okay? Thanks for joining me, everybody. Take care. Bye.